it's out. It's recording. It's recording. It's recording. Hello. Hi, everybody. A few people type something Rachel just so we can see. And I can. And when you're in here, I'll just do your question. You, Go back yeah. to where you're at. Otherwise, um, we'll do that. How do we get back to where I was? Hang on. Hang on. Um, desktop. It's a nice desktop. I can shrink stuff. I just can't close go to webinar. So, yeah, I guess I'll just keep you in all the questions. But um, I think what we're going to do, you guys, um, we've got some new people and some returning people. So welcome, everybody that's new. Yeah, and um, on your dashboard, so you'll all see that you have a, a control panel. You've got a spot where you can, um, it says like questions, handouts, and some other stuff. I'm going to just... I'm going to work through quite a bit of small things first, and then I think uh, we'll open up for questions. So you can type your questions to Rachel um, instead of having questions constantly the whole time. Let me just get through explaining and showing some things, and then do questions. And then mics are muted. Yeah, and the new people, just so you know, we have everyone's mic muted. Because um, it's easier uh, to, to see people's typed questions because often everybody has a similar question. So Rachel just will kind of sort through them and then she'll, she'll tell them or show them to me and then I will answer them. And, and part of the thing too is, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, we already know that we're getting shortly to your question. So I think, um, I think we're good to, to get started. Um, one person just let me know that they can hear the mic, and then we will start. Just because sometimes we have to mess with the sound a little bit. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, here we go. So we're going to be using an iPad today, and we're using um, uh, the program Art Studio. And there are different – everybody knows my, my iPad code now forever. Uh, I have to change that. Um, we're going to be using Art Studio, uh, and there is now an Art Studio Pro, which is a program that's a little bit more like Photoshop, which is more advanced than what um, we're going to cover today in Art Studio. But the basics that we want to give you guys is to show you all the different things you can do, um, all the different brushes that are available, how you can change color how you can blend colors, um, how you can reverse and forward and do layers. Um, we're just going to show you some of that kind of stuff. So let me get back through our welcome girl, and we will get going uh, here. So let's start at the very beginning, um, which is just creating a file. So in the upper... In the upper um, right, you'll see I'm hovering my mouse over file. That's where we're going to create a new canvas. So you can either um, open something you've been working on, which would be open, open something that we've already got. You can import a whole photo and draw on top of or over your photo. Um, you can import a layer of a photo, or you can start with something new. And that's what I'm going to select right now. Uh, and it wants to know if I want to save this last thing that I was doing on, and I'm going to say, no, don't need to save it. Now, here's where you can you can change the size of your image, and it's in pixels. So if we made something that was 500 wide by 1,000 tall, it's going to be twice as tall as it is uh, narrow. And I usually work on a white background because it's easier to see what I'm working on. You can also work on a transparent background, and it'll give you like a grid of gray and black checkers. But we're going to just work on white. And as I'm working through different things, um, my goal is that you get just some different ideas to get your, to get your visual messages across and also some, some different ways to get a message across, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of show you a little bit of this tool menu that's on the left-hand side here. And we're gonna just kind of go through the tools 
And then we're going to get down into layers. So this bottom box here that looks like a stack of papers, that's, that's what's called layers. So if you've worked in Photoshop or you've seen people work in Photoshop, they're making transparencies. So by clicking on this plus sign down here, I can make a new layer on top of a layer. Um, and I can also, by clicking a layer, I can move a layer up and down. So I'm going to just first get rid of some layers. So if I want to get rid of a layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the garbage can. So let's get back to no layers at all. It's weird because I'm typing on the computer and on the iPad. There's a learning curve here for me. So I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete the layers that I added. And I'm going to just work on my ground layer. And we're going to just look a little bit at the tools. So on the left is your toolbar. On the right is color. And this top. Can you guys hear me again? Sorry about that. We've just been we've just been having a hard time the sound the last couple days. I can hear you. You can hear now. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, we'll probably pick some weird background sounds every now and then, but I am allowed. Okay, so I'm going to just reverse all of that away. So, what we'll do is a history, or in Photoshop, it's called a history, which sounds like a medical thing. Um, you can back up through what you've done. But so there's, there's the color thing. You can change the hue, the intensity, the vibrancy. Color. Um, and you can also uh, switch between your your two colors in this box. Like you're going to be using a couple colors often, um, but I usually just keep it on calling color one. So now let's look at the pencil. Um, there, when you click each of these tools, so pencil, paintbrush, oil brush, airbrush, scatter, it gives you this whole box of options that are suited around and also similar to Photoshop. So when I click my pencil, I can pick defaulted sizes. So I can go through here, I can pick a fat one, I can pick a skinny one, I can pick one with a feathered edge. And then there's also different things you can adjust in these different slides. So you can adjust the sizes right there. You can scroll down, you can adjust the opacity or the transparency. You can adjust whether the beginning and ends of a stroke fade in and out. And you can also adjust, adjust all sorts of 
means to play with. Jitter is whether or not the pixels stay in a row or not. So if you want something organic, you can scramble the different parts of a brush. A lot of this stuff, it's just, you'll find things by messing with it. So just take a slider. Whoa, what is that one? You can mess with the hues within a color that's getting laid down. You can mess with this with the saturation. So play with all of that stuff because really there are so many options. So I'm gonna just play with the pen a little bit. And then I want you to also look at the bottom of your screen. There's also two sliders down that you can use to change stuff without having to go back to that big menu. You, you can use these sliders at the bottom. So I've got my pen fault there, but then I can change the size by using the slider at the bottom. So if I want just a teeny little pencil. You can also change the opacity down here. And you see there's a little sample box showing us the opacity. So I can change the opacity. And what's really cool about these programs is they, they really work to try to simulate actually working on different types of paper, different uh, different mediums. Because you'll see the more I overlap a spot, the richer the color gets. Um, so it, it's, you know, it has a little bit of a natural feel to it. So that's the pen, pencil tool. Let's look at the next one. And there's two different kinds of brushes. One, um, one is the wet brush. So when you smear two colors together, so let me, so here I'm just picking from what kind of shape of brush head I want. And it's showing me a sample there. And there are all kinds of brush heads. So if you want dots, section of dots, if you want uh, calligraphic, there's different calligraphic shape brushes. And same thing, you can change the size with the sliders below. So let's just do, um, let's take a little blue purple. How pretty is that? And since this is a wet brush, what's cool is when you come in and lay another color over it, it kind of starts to fade the edges together and incorporate some of the first color. So, you know, it's stimulating as if you had a wet boots. So that's wet brush. Let's just take that. Then there's a dry brush. They're just called a dry one paintbrush, right? which is the same thing. You can change the size and stuff all in this menu, or you can change it on the sliders below. And let's just put a couple colors that on. It's going to be a pink thing. And we can make this one larger and smaller. And that one acts a little, it's a little less goopy than, than the wet brush. The colors still overlap each other, but it doesn't smear. So, so that's the dry brush. And you can change the opacity nice. and size with all, with all of that also. So how that is, oh, this is fun stuff. I feel like this stuff, thank you. Okay, so the next one I use a ton uh, when I'm doing different rendering is the egg brush. So here you can just put on paint colors um, in all sorts of sizes. And you can also change the opacity of your faint colors. And the more you layer an airbrush over itself, the darker, the darker your spots will start to get also. And then if you want just more shadow, you can do it by changing your color. You can just keep deepening your color. And you can just you get really, you can get really involved with all this stuff. Narrow your brush, darken the color, all sorts of things. So that's the airbrush. And then below that, I call it the splatter tool. Let's see what, oh, they call it dot settings. So, but um, it has some really cool stuff. Actually, let me show you the one that's on there right now. I'm gonna make just a little bit of color with the airbrush. Oh, we don't brown. I'm going to make a little bit of color. Let's see. 
Oh, and look, I accidentally messed around with my finger and made a letter under the color. So if I've got a little bit of color going on, or whatever, I can make a new layer. So this is our first little layer. So there's a plus sign here. That means make a brand new layer. And there's a plus plus in a box. That means to copy a layer. So first I'm gonna make a brand new layer, just to show you this tool here. So I've made a new layer and I want it to be above my purple. So I'm gonna slide it above my purple. And then I'm gonna select my splatter tool here. So there's my splatter tool. And you can use the different effects in here. I'm gonna get white to make things like the shine of rhinestone or texture on fabric to make something look like velvet. So that's, this is kind of what we use, I use, I know a few people use this, to make stuff look like the tiara actually has sparkles in it. And you can change the size and shape. And this is a great way to put sparkles on something. You can you can change the color of your sparkles. If you want a little bit of gold, you can come in and put a few little gold sparkles. Then, if you're thinking about layers, and we're gonna get much, much more into that, What's interesting is you can you can make your sparkle layer and you can add to your sparkle layer. But if you're like, ah, you know, I like my sparkles, but it's just too intense, you can go down here where your layers are separated. So I'm gonna look at different layers, and you'll see that each layer has a slider at the top. So with this slider, I can change the opacity of the layer separate from everything else. And one um, one advantage to working in Photoshop or on the iPad or working with layers, uh, it's an advantage and a disadvantage. If you If your client is like, yes, I love everything about this, but let's make it blue. You just hit blue layer, your layer, crash, you can do. You're going to want them to think that it's actually a little to change the color. Otherwise, people just, you know, they will just have you make what we call a lateral adjustment where they haven't really changed anything about the costume or the design. They've just made you their personal something for a minute. Yeah, I can't stitch on the weapon. I can't say that. So... Like I am always known for track, I was showing you the opacity bar up here. So if you like your circle layer or your texture layer, but it's just a little bit too much, rather than redoing it, you can come up here and you can just soften it up a tiny little bit. Or if your blue is a little bit too blue, you can soften it up a little bit. So each of these separate things, you can also adjust the opacity of. How cool is that? It's very cool. Um, okay, so that's let's look at a little bit more on this splatter button. I'm going to I'm going to delete. So I'm going to use my trash can. I'm going to get get rid of the sparkle layer, and we are going to just delete that. Oh, my big fingers. Um, then we're going to add another blank layer, so a clear layer. Uh, and you'll see whenever it's got this kind of gridded. Uh, pattern around it, think about it like a transparency. Um, and that you're that's somewhere where it's clear until you've added something to it. So on this splatter brush, another thing I like to do, there's all kinds of brushes in here. I think the one I like is under assorted, one that I use often. There's this brush 230, which looks kind of like netting. And in our business, we're drawing a lot of tutus. So you can change the size of your netting or whatever, you know, it might be, it might, maybe you're drawing fishing, uh, fishing nets. Um, and then it's really great that you can come in and kind of play with the texture of something like that. And highlights and shadows are going to help, help your, your, your stuff look more interesting too. So, so I can put some light netting over things. I can make some really dark pit parts you know so so play with all of these different textures another uh another cool thing in the texture stuff um 
it, so remember that kind of like every one of these buttons has another set of buttons that you can get to and play with. And if you're like me, you'll start to just kind of like have your favorites. Like I like to use this splatter. There's some different splatters in here that I like to use a lot. So when I'm making kind of a velvety texture or a, a rich texture, I like to mess with these different splatters. You know, you can you can start to get a richer look in your drawing just by by changing changing the size, the opacity and stuff. And if you want to like start to simulate more like real velvet, then you can start to put in just these little bits of highlight here and there, um, you know, to give it some shine. So, and anything is going to help your your idea get across. All, all of these things are going to help. So any any little separate thing you can do is a good thing. So that's that one. Um, then our next tool going down is an eraser. And just like all the other tools above it, we can change the size of the eraser um, and we can change the shape of the eraser. So if we want to erase in kind of a stippled pattern, we can erase in a stippled pattern. If we just want a straightforward erase, we can just pick a straightforward erase, basic, here we go. And you'll see too that there's erasers that have a feathered edge or a hard edge. And also in all of those settings, you can adjust the kind of edge that's there. Let me put a little more color on here quick to show you the next tool. So let's put some green. This, this one is not, you know, this isn't going to be on display anywhere. But below the racer, there's a smudge tool. And it also has the different, different settings that you can play with, different uh, nibs for your smudge tool. But we're going to use it just like it is. And what that does is it lets you start to feather the edges on your own and blend the color on your own. So you can just do all sorts of cool things by smooshing, like this kind of re-wets the paint, if you think of it like paint, and you can start to smash stuff together. And this, this gets used quite a bit when I'm getting my idea across. And I'm the first person to tell you that I am not a good drawer or an amazing artist, um, but I can, I can get the idea down somehow. Um, you'd agree, right? What? I'm not a very good He's drawer. I'm mediocre because I'm because because I start with something and then I draw over the top of it, which is what we're going to be looking at. Um, below the smudgy finger is a paint bucket, and that's just like dumping a bucket of color on the floor. So the paint bucket will fill in anywhere that there's a solid color or white. So if I dump my paint bucket out here, it's going to fill in chunks of paint. And what's interesting is where there's these like pixely stuff. If you zoom in, the paint bucket isn't going to fill that chunk of white in because it's actually not a chunk of white. There's like gray and all sorts of different pixels here. That's something I should have showed you too. If you haven't figured it out yet, with two fingers, you can swipe uh, in and out and change the size of your canvas. Um, Let's look at paint bucket on a layer on its own. Let's delete that layer. Let's delete this layer. We, it won't let me delete it. There we go. So we have just a blank layer again. So now if I paint bucket, it will fill the whole thing in. The whole thing will paint bucket. So you can paint bucket an entire area. The next one, and I haven't played with this one too much on this program. I've used this one more in Photoshop. You can make different gradients. So let's see if we can figure out, oh, it's just making a gradient between our two, our color one and color two. So if we want to make an ombre pair of tights that goes from dark blue um, to lemony yellow, if I pick those two colors and then I come down and select my gradient, it's going to make a gradient 
somehow that I don't know how to put onto the thing. We found something I don't know how to do. How do you think I make reset? There's my gradient. I went to color one to color two and how do I put it up there? You guys, I'm going to look this one up and play with it. Oh, there. I just had to slide it up. So there's a gradient. And actually, check this out. From whatever corner you slide, you can change the direction of your gradient. How fantastic is that? Then I'm betting, just like earlier, if we put our gradient on top of a solid color. Let's make a solid color here. Why not fuchsia again? So even though what I see now is my gradient, I see my gradient layer here. If I click my finger below it and I paint bucket in a color, that's where it's going to paint bucket in. So I've just paint bucketed in this fuchsia, but we can't see it because my gradient is completely opaque. But then I can go up to my gradient and I can start to soften my gradient. And now I will start to get that fuchsia quality showing through. So that's pretty slick. Um, that's gradient. So let's play a little bit more with that one since I never play with it. Here's a gradient that ra radiates from the inside out. So there you go. It's putting, it's putting the center of the gradient wherever you tap. And then it's radiating outward. Here's this kind of in a circle. It's spiraling around. And then here's from the outside in. So there's there's a lot there's a lot you can do with gradients. So okay, and then you can add text, right? Because you want to add your name to stuff. We're gonna pick a color. We're gonna select text. We're gonna say my drawing. Drawing. Yeah, and there it is. Then when I touch the text, it wants me to say, I'd like to edit the text or I'd add, like to add a new text. So then I can say, edit my text. I, I can move it around. I can use two fingers and I can twirl it. I can run it up the side and I can change the font. Um, I can go back in and change the spelling if I'd like by clicking in that box, um, my art. There you go. So, so that's kind of how the text works. Then what's cool too is if you go back into your layers, let's say you want to mess with the text a little bit. So in our layers, we've looked at add a new layer. We haven't looked at duplicate a layer, but let's duplicate a layer. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to use this button that's like the photocopy symbol. And if I duplicate that layer, it makes another one just like it. And then this one is to merge a layer. So if I click my text layer and I say merge down, it's going to merge it down one step. It's like it's merged it down one step down the ladder. If I say merge visible, it flattens the whole image. But you can always undo it with the undo button over here. There. So I undid it. So I'm separate again. But... Um, if you want to mess with your text, once you've flattened, so I flattened or merged my text to the layer below it, now I can go in and smudge away my, t my text if I want to a little bit. If I want to, you know, I don't know what, but you can do that. Okay. So does anybody have any questions about the basics of this bar on the left? Because the next thing we're going to talk about is some of this stuff on the top. And then we're going to do a drawing together. And I'm going to show you just a few ways that we add our own fabrics or use our own dress forms or pictures of people, a whole bunch of different tricks. So just questions about kind of the, the bar on the left or what the heck are layers. So, somebody feeling good or, or I'm driving you crazy? Feeling good? Feeling excited? Yes. Okay, two of you. That's great. Okay. Okay, so let's look a little bit now at the box that's on. Did we get a question? All good. 
Um, let's look at the at these boxes on the top a little bit. Um, file, which is what we started with, make a new file, open a file we've got, save it. Um, we're going to look at import and import from photos here in a second. Actually, let's look right now. So import, if I click import, I can import a layer on here. So say I'm making a costume covered in purple pansies. I can find a purple pansy on the internet and then import it. Uh, or I can just import right from my photo. So I'm going to import and I'm going to tell it that I want to insert it as a layer. If I tell it create a new image, if I select create a new image, it scraps all the information that I've done so far and it just goes, okay, we're starting a new thing. But if you insert is a layer, then you're going to put it on top of the this thing that we've already drawn here. So I'm going to say import from photos. So I'm going to just stick in from my photos. I've got uh, a dress right there. And then if I want to work on the dress, I can, let's say I want to keep this dress form and draw on top of the dress form. I can use my eraser and I can start to go in and I can start getting rid of everything that isn't the dress on the dress form. So that's import a layer, import a photo as a layer. Okay, that's what that one is. The other one, import from photos, will just take a photo and start us from scratch completely. So now, now we're, we're, we've lost all of our layers over here. We can't reverse anymore. The reverse button down here is doing nothing. It thinks that's what I wanted to work on. So it is a good idea, like anything you're working on on the computer, to save stuff or save as as you're working because that way if you lose it hopefully you haven't lost the whole thing okay and that save is just like saving a file huh like when you lose stuff i lose stuff all the time on the computer and it's just a nightmare he said that should have saved i should have saved it i save it all the time or i'll work for like three days on a print that we're printing and i'll have saved it once yesterday no. And then I have to walk out of the room for a little bit. So that's import. Information just tells you the size of the file, how many layers it is, what's going on. So that's the file button. Now let's look a little bit at edit. Um, undo is the same as reverse. Redo is fast forward. Cut, copy, merge. Those are all similar to cut, copy, and merge on a um, computer program. But let's cut and copy something. So above the pencil, something I didn't show you. Oh, some bellies. <laughs> Instagram notices will be popping up here. Hopefully, Carlo doesn't send me anything through Scandalous. chat. Um, on the pencil button, I didn't show you this. This is good to know, too. This is like a cut last select section. So when I clicked that, instead of getting a menu alongside of it, See at the very bottom of the screen, I've got all these different things. I have a square where I can highlight a square. So I'm just using my finger to highlight a square. And I can do that. Then I can go up at the top and I can say edit, copy. The, the active selection has been copied. I can say OK. And then I can say edit, paste. And now... Now I've got a layer that if we turn off the under layer, now I have on top of my original photo, the part that I copied and pasted. So that's, that's copy and paste. Another good thing to see here, there's so many things. This A, this lets us know whether the layer is, is uh, locked or unlocked. And I think they're referring to it as active or not active. So when this A is clicked, I can delete or move this layer. It's there for me to not mess with. But if I uncheck the A, then I can mess with the layer, okay? Okay, we're in the edit window. That's where we're at. We're looking at the edit. So copy, paste. Copy merged would mean that if I have layers underneath here, it's going to copy the layers that are underneath, okay? 
Oh, let's look, let's look a little bit more at this box on the left, okay? I told you I was gonna jump around. Carl. This is the, <laughs> don't send anything to Travis. Um, so we made a square. We can also copy and paste a circle by clicking on the circle. We can also, this one is called a lasso, where you can freehand draw. And you see there's a little square where I started. As long as I get back to the square at the beginning, I can copy irregular things. This next one is a magnetic lasso. So if I zoom in, you can kind of see how that works. And the magnetic lasso lets you kind of slide around and lift your finger and select different points. So if I wanted to cut out just a part of this skirt, I could use this magnetic or this straight edge lasso to cut out different parts. Um, the magic wand is cool. It will highlight a section of color. So if there's if there's a little section of color, or if I have high contrast, like if I have black and white side by side in my image, and I want to get rid of the white, I can go in and I can cut out. I can cut out or copy the white. And then this blurb one that's next to it, I'm going to investigate to see what that is. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. These, so, yeah. Yeah. So I do. I sound like a valley girl. Um, yeah. I'm gonna investigate what this little button is down here and get back to you because I've never used it. We're gonna find a few things that I've never used. Here. Okay. Back to our edit win window. You can change the smoothness of your pencil. So by by selecting between these different things, you can have kind of a clunky thing. You can make it draw only straight lines. You can make your pencil draw only squares, only circles, only whatever that is, multi-sided shapes. Another cool mode is symmetry. And let's just touch symmetry vertical and show you what that does. So it's putting a line down the center of our page. So I want to move this piece of my dress form. So I'm gonna also, I'm gonna show you a couple things and add it. So I've got symmetry turned on and I also want to move my layer. So I skipped down to transform layer and let's say that my dress form, let's say I actually took a picture square on. I can move my dress form to the middle of the page and then with the symmetry drawing mode. I feel like saying cemetery. Cemetery, symmetry. symmetry. Sim with, the, with the symmetry. <laughs> drawing mode, I can draw symmetrical. The old cemetery. The old cemetery mode. Or so check cemetery. this out. So I've selected my pen or my, my pencil, whatever you want to call it. And as I work around here, it's going to draw symmetrically whatever it is I draw. So this is a great way to crank out all sorts of technical drawings. Um, how cool is that, right? That's neat. So that's using the symmetry mode vertically. So if I want to keep decorating, right, let's make some purple pansies. If I'm making a symmetrical something, why didn't it change my color? If I'm making a symmetrical something, I can come in and I can start filling a lot of space all at once. Or you can just draw one side and mirror it. And I will show you how to mirror stuff too. So that's that's something that's fun with the symmetry. Symmetry, say it again, Rachel. Symmetry. Symmetry. With the symmetry, you can do all sorts of fun stuff with symmetry and make it symmetrical. So that's symmetry. So if I selected... Um, the horizontal, it would change my axis and it would copy whatever I'm doing horizontal. And that's the symmetry drawing mode. Clear layer clears a layer. Fill layer would just fill a layer with a color. Now transform is a good one to look at. Um, what transform does is it gives you all these adjustment options. Uh, move, scale, and rotate. Move scale, rotate, and then just different combinations. So the most basic combination that I use would be move, scale, and rotate. And what that lets you do is with using two fingers, 
you can slide in and slide out to change the position of a whole layer. If you want your girl crooked or you want to change something in your drawing or another way to use that move scale and rotate. Let me take off this symmetry mode. We don't need that anymore. We're going to say none. Let's say that I've spent hours and hours crafting this really cool kind of orchidy flower thing here. And that I'm going to use loads of them on my rendering. So let me just finish crafting my beautiful squiggly flower. Let's give it some leaves. Let's give that leaf, I feel like Bob Ross, let's give that leaf a little dimension here. What's that leaf doing down there? Happy little That's a happy little leaf. Okay, that's a terrible leaf. But, <laughs> um, so, so I've got this flower that I absolutely love. Oh, I didn't draw it on its own layer. So let's, this is called learning, right? I've deleted my flower. I've reversed some. If I want to move that flower around, I need to make a new layer. So let me draw. How about just a heart? Hearts are simple. Let's do just a little kind of heart there. And you're in love with your heart, right? It's the best thing you've ever done. And you want to load them up on this thing. So we can say edit, and we are going to transform this layer. And we can take that one little heart that we drew and we can lay them over there. And then in the bottom right, I'm going to say apply. Then I can copy my heart. I can make a carbon copy of my heart. Oh, if only. Oh, hang on. Why is it letting me copy my heart? I don't have it. Sometimes when it doesn't let you move something, it might mean that something is active somewhere else. So the reason why it's not letting me copy my heart is what? Let's sandwich these layers together. Okay, so this is good information to know too. Here's what just happened there. This, this photo that we imported, right? When we went edit, or we actually went file, import from photos, is a gigantic resolution. So it was only allowing me to have three layers to work with over here because the photo is so big. So that's also something to think about. Like if you're trying to add layers on the left, it might be that you just started with something too gigantic for your iPad to handle. But my iPad has the lowest amount of memory. So if yours has more, um, you'll be able to make more layers. And if we were starting from scratch, we could make more layers. But now that I've sandwiched some of it down, I can copy my heart, and then I can say, um, I can say edit, transform, move and rotate. Then I can take this heart, and I can put one over there. So it's a way to make elements and move them around. So we're gonna say, keep it, we love it. Another thing below, so transform, those ones are all self-explanatory. Move, scale, rotate, move and scale. The next one down is distort layer. And what that does is it gives you different points where you can push and pull something. So if I had a heart over here and I wanted it to look like it was actually bending around the back of my drawing, I can use distort to create perspective. And I can make the part that would vanish start to vanish. And then I can say, sure, go with that. Then I can take my eraser and I can get rid of the part of it that we don't want to see. So that's that's cool that you can distort a layer. Now let's look at some of these other ones. We've covered, we've covered pretty much everything you're gonna use is in file, edit, the bar on the side, the colors on the right, and the info on the bottom. But now if we go to image, we can change the size of our canvas. So remember earlier, I couldn't add more layers. It's because my canvas is really, 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 really big. So if I come here, it's 3,000 pixels right now. If I just make it 1,000 pixels and I say keep it centered, now I've made my canvas smaller. So I'm going to say approved canvas size. 
Oh, I actually changed the canvas, not the image. That's good. Okay, let's go back a page. Let's go back and see what I did there. Canvas is changing the size of the canvas that you're working on. So we went from a great big canvas to a small canvas. So every part of our image that didn't fit in the canvas is gone. But if we go to resize, that should resize our actual image instead of changing the canvas size. Let's find out together. Do, do, do. There. So now I resized my image a little bit smaller so that now I can add, I can look at all, I can add tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of layers on there. So that's, so image, to change the image size is under resize, to change the canvas size is under canvas size. And you'll also see there's a button here that says keep proportions. So if I turn that button off and I say make my canvas 500, it's gonna not change the height. But if I say keep the proportion on, it's gonna make sure that when I change this top number, it's going to proportion the bottom number, okay? And if I want to abort and cancel, if I just click out here back on the image, we're out of that menu. Flip and rotate. Flip it horizontal, flip it vertical. Rotate, twist it to the right, twist it to the left. I'm going to rotate it back. Um, so that's what image does. Then adjust is all these cool things that you can do with layers or with your finished um, thing. Let's, let's import a new something to look at. Um, I'm gonna insert a layer just so we have something with more cop, with more, um, with more color and stuff to go. I'm gonna merge everything that's visible. I'm going to import a layer. Let's just see what's on my camera roll. We've been making robots, so I've got a lot of robots. Let's put this teacup in here because that has some color that we can look at. Let's make it bigger. We're gonna say, okay. Then in adjust, there's infinite number of things you can do. Brightness, contrast, exposure, and these are all words that if you played in Photoshop or Lightroom, it will sound familiar. Um, other things, you can adjust the hue and the lightness. So you can change the color altogether, the saturation, the, the intensity of the color. There's all sorts. So play with all of those. Temperature, highlight, you can adjust the low lights. You can change it. Um, to the color that's in your color palette. So if I go back again, and instead of black and white, let's say that I'm, I want an orange teacup. If I select orange and I say um, colorify, now I have an orange teacup. So those are good ones to just play with all of them. Posterize will put uh, harder edges around stuff and it will eliminate the number of colors. So right now, I can see my teacup it has 256 computer recognized colors. As I slide that slider down, it will start to make it look more and more and more like a poster until there's only black left. So that's fun too. You can really get some cool effects with that. Um, black and white turns it black and white. Transparency makes a layer transparent, which you can also do in layers. And then I'm not sure what auto contrast does. Oh, it just changed the contrast a little bit, um, right? That's like, that's, that's like, yeah. So this, most of these things you're gonna adjust um, are things that you could probably play with more when you're finished with your sketch or your drawing. Um, let's look now at select. Um, these different things will come highlighted based on what you're doing. And I generally never use select. Um, if we select all, it highlights the whole image, which we can then say we want to cut it. Oh, it selects the whole part of that layer. So my teacup was on that layer. So the stuff that you're gonna find up here in select is also similar to the, the select 
uh, button above your pen or pencil over here on the left. Then layer, same thing. So, so whereas earlier we flipped and rotated the whole canvas, with layer you can flip and rotate just the layer. So if we want to flip just our teacup around, we can flip our teacup. Um, adding a mask, um, that would just be blocking out a section. So if you want to make a mask with a color, um, I actually what I've done here is I've masked out everything that's outside of the teacup. So it's not, it's not, you can't see my finger or my pen sliding across, but I'm trying to draw outside the teacup and it's not letting me do it. Um, then merge, down, merge, visible, and flatten are the same things that we were doing over here when we were in our layer, okay? So let's reverse a little bit and get back to just teacup. Then filters um, are just different things you can also do to a layer. So if you want to sharpen a layer a little bit, it'll give you a slider. And we don't have enough stuff going on, so we're not, we don't really have anything to sharpen. It's pretty sharp already. Oh, no, we did. I unsharpened it. So it doesn't show you it active. Let's go back and look at that one again. Um, so you can unsharpen or sharpen a layer. Oh, and then here on the bottom left, actually, it lets you preview it. So you can see what you've done. Well, now it's not doing what I just did. Play with that. I'm not sure why that's not working. Oh, yeah, it, okay. There we go. I don't see a need for it, so we're not going to get into it anymore. <laughs> Distort, noise, borders, stylize, all those different things are to add texture to a drawing. Um, let's actually look at distort. That's a good one. Um, let me open one more image. Um, what's something that we can distort? Let's, let's take this quickie sketch I've done for some androids we're working on. Um, I want to make it bigger so we can see it. Now let's look at, let's play with distort. You can take your, your not so busty girl and elastify. So I can adjust the size of my pen here. And if I want, I can, your fit, you can do this for your family. You can take and make all their waist skinnier, enlarge things. If I wanted my skirt to have a little more flair, I could elastify just the sides of her skirt. Um, so there's all sorts of things you can do. And actually, I'll use it a lot of times. We're like, I'm almost done with something and I'm frustrated with like a chunk of something. Uh, so if I go in back to distort and elastify, like if I don't like the way her feet are here, I can come in and I can slightly nudge her whole body around. You know, if she was standing kind of crooked, I can come in and square her up. So those are all different things you can play with to um, in there. Um, noise, render. I don't know why. You can render clouds and stripes. That's in Photoshop, too. I don't know what the point is. Um, noise is to, Rachel, how would you describe noise from from Photoshop or Lightroom, or do you ever use noise? I only remove noise. <laughs> yeah, she only removes noise. I guess I don't know 100% what noise is, so um, you can well, be upset photos, with me. It's like that digital color and like little pixelation. Along the edges of stuff. So probably would I be safe to say or If you want to make something like greedy. Yeah. Excess pixelation. Thank you. Chelsea says noise takes away excess pixelation. So, so here's something too to think about pixels and um, uh, when you think about pixels um, and enlarging and shrinking something. So pixels are the amount of dots going across. Let's see, I can illustrate this. Pixels are like the amount of squares going across your image, right? So the more pictures, the more fine tuned, the more pixels the more clarity you've got. But let's say that you have an image in a low resolution, right? And you have this purple pixel here. 
and then next to your purple pixel, you have a red pixel. What happens when you tell the computer to make the it, the um, to make the image larger or to add more pixels? Those there are no pixels between the pink and the purple. So what the computer is going to do is it's going to figure out an in between color and it's going to automatically color in between there since it can't it can't completely generate the pixel that's between those two so when you enlarge stuff if you have like something that's 72 resolution and you make it 200 resolution what the computer is doing is it's going to add pixels in between pixels or if you have a whole section of black over here and you enlarge it the computer is just going to add more black into it until you're next to your white section then the computer is going to add a couple grays until it can get you back to white so that's that's helpful i think that's helpful was that helpful that's helpful that's so that's kind of like pixels and resolution but let's let's actually look at layers more and a past drawing and then we're going to kind of do a drawing all together so that was like the intro hello um any any pressing questions about that i know it's a ton of information really fast but everybody will get the recording with this and they can go back and play i've talked more in this one than any webinar ever dry? i'm dry i gotta drink some water here quick those are the dogs we're having trouble with the microphone so you get to hear everything today okay let me just open up some some stuff that's fun to look at um let's open this mrs potts this was from uh uh beauty and the beast that we did a while ago and look still buried in her is a watermark so the the sketches that i've got right now um these are not for you know going in the historical record or to impress my friends or to impress anybody for me, as uh, somebody who designs and makes costumes, this the sketch or the rendering is more about getting an idea across clearly than, than it is trying to impress somebody that I've either drawn something or collaged something or made a watercolor or who knows what. So I use the sketch as a way just to communicate the ideas for myself and also for the people building stuff and for the people who are going to going to be wearing stuff so it's 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 about practicality so let's look at our mrs potts sketch here and you'll see too actually i'll open another one um we had a whole bunch of different mrs potts's because we were presented with a whole bunch of ideas so instead of working for hours and hours and hours on one mrs pot we did a bunch of, I did a bunch of quick small ones so that I could see really what was sparking their interest and then elaborate on that. And we ended up with this kind of blue china look. Um, so let's look at her layers and I'm going to just turn off, actually I'm going to merge that layer down. I'm going to slowly, so this eyeball here, that turns off a layer. So let's just switch off these layers. And you, can, if I put her smaller over here, you can see what's happening. So the gold is gone. Her bow is gone. Look at this. I didn't even make both sides of the collar. I made one side of her collar and mirrored it. Her hat is from a layer. Her bodice is a layer. Her sleeve puffs are a layer. Her sleeves are a layer. The teapot from the internet's a layer. The hem is from a layer, and somewhere the last outline is from a layer. So this started with just a Google Im image search of blonde standing, and then I built all my different elements on top of blonde standing. So I will show you a couple more of this approach, and then we're gonna work on one together. So there, there's how we dressed up Mrs. Potts. And you know we were going back and forth about her arms. Should her should she have just two human arms, or should she have teapot arms? 
and we ended up with the teapot arm. So it's nice. A nice thing about this is when you've got people that are changing their minds, more gold, less gold, you, you can do that without having to start from scratch every single time. And in a way, it's a good thing and a bad thing because when, when I used to have to actually like take a pencil and markers and watercolor and make a sketch, you know, uh, you encouraged people not to change their minds so much because you didn't want to have to start over again. I don't want to, I said don't save because I'm already happy with what's going on. Let's look at this. This was from a ballet we did last year with um, Texas Ballet Theater. And they were going round and round and round about having this cut out on the guy or Garrett, who is a choreographer, also wanted this kind of plasticky armor piece. So here we just were able to make options really quickly by adding and subtracting a layer without, oh. I know, I wish he would have stuck with happen? this. He thought it was too weird. But then, oh, the, girl, the, I know, then the girls had clear see-through plastic two shoes on up. that lit up, but this was weird. I hope he's not watching. It was beautiful. Um, it was it a really fabulous was. ballet. I re we really I enjoyed something. them. I know. So you can kind of see as I delete my layers, kind of the process, you know, at one point there was this idea of a mask, the mask went away. There was gonna be mesh holding up these these weird pants with the cutout. And then as I just uh, delete and delete, eventually we've got probably the naked man left at the bottom. Here's the other thing that I was playing with below all of that drawing. I was messing with different textures of blue. So there's like glass blobs. There's some sort of blue cave drawing kind of thing. Um, there's this blue, I don't know what this is. And it's an upside down cake. That's a wedding cake. So at one time, this was kind of the idea that they went from blue to kind of silver white. So it's interesting to see all those different little chunks um, coming. There was one where it was gonna have kind of a granite undertone. So that's just all the different layers to play with. And when you're in layers, often too, um, like with those Mrs. Potts and quite a few different things from that show, you kind of discover really what you want by monkeying with, with additions and subtractions, by like adding and subtracting stuff. You, you start to kind of find out what it is you like and don't like. So let's get back to, so, oh cool, right? So see how I turned these three layers off? At one time, we were going to have this kind of, well, we did do this. Did they have this? I don't remember. What? Did uh, they have these kind of splotches? No. no. That. At one time, we were going to make it look kind of like stained glass. So I actually made and repeated these different splotchy elements um, to make the sketch look like stained glass. So, so that's that. Um, let's look at one more. I don't want to save the changes because I don't want to get rid of it. Um, let's look at, this was for a client that we had last year that wanted something fun to wear to one of the Tony's Selector Committee costume parties. And she started off by sending us a picture of herself um, from last year's costume party. So there's the gal, last year's, the year before was a disco party. So why reinvent the wheel? I just started adding layers of costume right on top of her until we ended up with um, our finished rendering. So what's cool too is, um, I don't know if you can see this down here on the left, there's just a picture of gold sequins. I eliminated her bodice, I erased away her bodice until I had that gold sequin texture underneath. Um, and this costume is somewhere, there's photos on the internet. It actually looked pretty much just like that. It might be on my desktop. Can I go to the desktop? There, I don't know if you can see it. Do you see where I'm circling my mouse? There's the finished costume right way back there in the back. So it's, it's interesting to see, you know, there's the creative process too, is where how do we get from this to that and and what changes, what do you keep and what do you scrap? But pretty much 
I think we do a pretty good job once we have the finished sketch. Uh, sketch is st we pretty much stick to it or, or make it better, right? We'd rather have a mediocre sketch to improve on than a sketch with so many details that you know you kind of lose the you lose the fun. Um, let's look at the layers on one more. Uh, let's see. We just did a um, a nutcracker, and this was the, our snow idea. How can I flip it? Oh, there I flipped it. Um, and at one point, there were we were going to just put these literal giant flakes on it, and we we got rid of that. So I was so um, I was sad to see the big snowflakes go, but they were so fabulous they did not need them. Um, these were just exquisite on stage. And you'll see here too. I started this drawing with just a photo of a dress form, and then I built all my different layers on top of it. And actually what's cool is Rachel and I were in Houston for their Nutcracker two years ago. And we found these pillows at a, what was that store? At like a home goods store. And this, this picture of a pillow is how Rachel created um, all this fabulous stuff for the snow scene that we just did for Barrel Beach Ballet. So it started with a picture of a pillow. How fun is that? What's what layer do I see? I'm messing with what layers to turn on and off here. So that, that started with a photo of a pillow. So you can find inspiration all kinds of places. Okay, okay. I think it's time to draw and layer something. Let's do a ballet costume, just because I know there's a lot of ballet folks viewing. But we do have some new folks. We have all sorts of costume people today. Um, I'm going to create a new canvas. I don't need to save my thing because I didn't make any changes to it. It will remain just as it was. And I want my height to be taller than my width. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave it this 750 by 900, and I'm going to create on white. Okay. And let's let's do like a harlequin. <laughs> Everett, I'm sorry, you guys, that my microphone isn't working as good as it should, and that we have to listen to the dogs. Um, but that's how you know, you know, I'm not a robot. Um, so we've got our new file, and let's just work on the photo I took earlier of the dress form. Um, so I'm going to insert a layer from my saved it to my photos, and actually, you'll see earlier I just grabbed a picture of a girl too. So why don't we just stick this girl, uh, let's just work her into this. Um, let's just make her a little bit bigger. And if you are if you don't, so we call this a croquis. Um, we're using it, we're using something to draw on top of. So she, instead of me trying to draw this girl who doesn't know what she wants, she says, I don't know. Um, I'm going to just draw right on top of it. But I know I want her to have this big poofy skirt. So this is a photo from our shop. Um, so I'm going to just transform and shrink this layer until, oh, look, I did that. I didn't import it right. What I did was, since I'm, I'm rushing and I'm excited, I imported from photo instead of importing as a layer. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start over so you can see where my hair was. I want a new file. Nope, nope, nope. I also have big fingers if you haven't met me. So this little tiny iPad, you know. I'm gonna make one that's 750 wide by 900 tall. And then, now I'm going to import, insert is a layer from photos, my girl, because I don't want her to just be trapped in the iPad. And I'm gonna make her, I'm gonna transform and I'm gonna make her a little bit taller. And then now I'm also going to import, insert is a layer, the photo of our poofy tutu that's sitting here in the room. And now, I'm going to, before I make the skirt fit the girl, I'm going to use this 
lasso. So I'm using the tool, the selection tool, and I'm going to zoom in with my fingers, and I'm going to just start first to vaguely lasso out sections so of, of stuff that I don't want. Why didn't my lasso work? You know, there's always things that stump you. Why is my lasso not working? How many times have you heard that today? Why, why, why? Expect to be frustrated, you know? Um, let's see. I'm going to make another layer. Let's undo, let's undo. Let's make sure our pencil's working. Pencil is working. Let's see. There's always stuff to frustrate, no matter how many times you mess with it. How weird is that? My lasso isn't working. There it's working. I don't know, it's because we were messing with these buttons down here. If your lasso doesn't work, select the square uh, on the left. Okay, so now let's zoom in and let's start getting rid of the background that we don't need here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna say edit cut, and then uh, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna just keep lassoing stuff and cutting it away. Earlier we made a scar, a lady's scarf that's getting printed of Rachel's dog, Louie. And Shia LaBeouf with the mod. And Shia LaBeouf. Or a psychedelic Shia LaBeouf. So we were lassoing around her dog. And I'm, I know that I'm going to add stuff to this. So I, I'm not being like super careful. So I'm going to just keep lassoing around. We can kind of keep the jig of him there. We, she has legs, so I don't need the dress for his legs anymore, right? So we're lassoing and cutting to make our beautiful costume sketch that people are gonna think we worked for days and days and days on. Now her dress doesn't fit. So let's go in here and let's transform the layer with the dress until we can get that kind of fit in her. And then we're gonna go in and we're going to twist some stuff around here a little bit. Um, actually, let's just take and get rid of some of the stuff that's behind her. So I'm gonna add a layer above her, and I'm gonna, her, her shirt doesn't fit very well. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just white out some of her shirt. And also I can see that vertically, the torso of what I've got on here is too long. So let's go into distort. And oh, I was distorting the layer underneath the girl. So see here, I made a layer between her and the dress, and I use that to mask out some of her shirt. So I can just merge that layer down because we don't need a brown shirt. Now I've selected my skirt again and I'm gonna distort that layer until it looks like it's more in it looks like it's more in line with maybe fitting her body, but we're gonna mess with it even some more. Okay. So there's that. Um, let's now just start um, we can start putting in some of our design ideas before we uh, start fine tuning a ton of stuff. So what I like to do is make a layer kind of above everything else that I really just scribble on that, that you can get rid of later. So I'm gonna just take my pencil and I'm gonna select maybe some gray and my pencil doesn't need to be huge, but I'm gonna now just start putting the idea of some stuff in. So I think my pencil's too big. So let's give her a wrist rough, because who doesn't like a wrist rough? So I'm gonna give her wrist roughs. So again, this is just like getting some information on the page that's not necessarily the finished information, right? Let's get rid of her hair too. Let's get, she doesn't need all this hair. My neck rough is never going to show if she keeps all Makeover. of her hair. Makeover. We call this a Photoshop facelift. I'm nice, you guys. You know I'm nice, right? 
So I'm gonna go back to my scribble layer and I'm gonna just keep scribbling in stuff. Shrink my pencil a little bit. So she's gonna have a really wild neck ruff. She's probably gonna need some sort of tricorn hat. And I'm not trying to do like the most amazing job yet. This is just like getting some information down. So we're just gonna get some information down on the page. Um, she probably is gonna need point shoes instead of tennis shoes. And when I don't know how to draw something, I just don't. I just put squiggles in. And then usually your how good of advice is that? That is not the right advice. When I don't know how to draw something, <laughs> I don't. Um, but now, now let's keep playing a little bit. So let's get rid of some more of this dress one that we don't need in here. Let's get rid of a little bit of that. Let's get rid of it a little bit. Oh, looking better already. Just a little bit of that. Now let's, still on our squiggle layer, just put in some more information. So now I'm going to think about, like, what on earth is she actually wearing? She's got shoulders. She's got an armhole. It's going to go down to her waist. And I don't have to totally follow what's on the girl either. It's just giving me some sort of a reference point that I can work from, okay? So I'm just getting the idea of what I'm drawing down on here so that I can make changes, right? That's part of the fun. Um, she's gonna have a center front. She's probably gonna have a side front seam, a side front seam. Maybe she's got some epaulets on. Who doesn't like an epaulet, right? So just the basic idea. Let's, let's go ahead and just keep putting some stuff on. Um, she's gonna need some bows bigger than that because this is for a nutcracker and if it's not cute, people will stomp and scream. What sexy. And, Ra you know, Rachel has a good point. If it's not sexy, what's the point? It's covering her up. Go home. We could make the top of, how could we sexy this up? Let's make it see through. The neckline is just. Should we not have such a closed up neckline? So, okay, let's delete some bows. She's embarrassed. She's embarrassed. Look at her face. She's, she is. <laughs> let's make it sexy. Let's, let's make a plungy, really wide open neck. There we go. Yeah. And then maybe just a few sparkles here. This is better. That's just oh. the neck piece. That, yeah. yeah. This go. is, that's going to be nude. Okay. And then instead of epaulets, she's going to have bows at her shoulder because it's still nutcracker. And again, I'm going to fine tune all of this stuff up. This is just like getting getting something on the page okay um instead of bows why don't we do like the little military studs. things studs okay so she's going to have little custom embroidered doohickeys going down there um and it's a harlequin doll so she has to have giant diamonds i guess that's what people that's just what people expect but she doesn't she doesn't have so she's going to have some giant diamonds. And I'm going to make them better in a little bit. This is just like, this is just like to change your mind, you know? And then as if giant diamonds aren't enough, they each need their own ribbon. Each giant diamond needs a ribbon. And on top of each giant diamond, we probably should have a bow. Whatever a bow shape is, you know, is some bow realness. Um, and then if that's not enough, she probably needs a ruffle around the hem. There's a really good book that's called Dynamic Drapes and Wrinkles. I think that's the name of it. I wonder if it's on the bookshelf over there. That um, a lot of a lot of folks that are bravering out into making costume sketches do a skirt 
like that, you know, they've got their skirt and then they're like, oh, I'm not satisfied with it. I hate the drawing of the skirt. It's just because you got to, you have to fake fabric in there a little bit. So just by giving some different little wrinkles and how fabric flares and folds, you can start to cheat. Uh, you can start to cheat actually making something look like there's fullness or movement in it. It's easier for the people building it. Yeah, it's <laughs> easier for the people building it too, because we know we know how to make this skirt, right? It's a circle with some fullness, but we don't know how to make this skirt. We have no idea what that is. And my style is very cartoony. I would say my sketches are pretty cartoony. So I get away with all these squiggles and wiggles. But again, it's about getting, it's about getting the idea out there. Then you can, you can make technical drawings if you want and say like, there's literally two seams right here and there's a seam right there and a seam right there. Um, she's probably gonna have little white gloves on. We just do some claw hands with them buttons. Let's give her another glove. Wah, wah, wah. And then you can like leave the face in if you want and turn it into something. Don't just leave your Photoshop or your, your stolen Google image face in there. Or you can, you can simplify it like I just did. So now let's go in and get rid of some more of the girl that we don't need. Um, what's her name? Does she have a name? I don't want to offend anybody. We can't give her a name. Kirsten. Kirsten. We're going to go ahead and we are going to paint away some of Kirsten. So I'm going to just start getting rid of Kirsten's gray shirt. It's not gray, her brown shirt. I'm going to get rid of that. I get rid of Kirsten's face. You're gone forever, Kirsten. Those jeans. Like Kirsten? No, no, Kirsten. no, oh, it's a, I think it's a name, Kirsten. 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 Then we've filled in, we've, we've covered up what this dress form is doing here, so we can just get rid of that and get rid of the rest of Kirsten. Actually, we could have just deleted Kirsten. She's gone. Okay, Rachel, what's our main color going to be here? Green. Green. Okay, so we're going to start with green, and I deleted like Kirsten's this. shoulder Never. here. Emerald green, okay. So, so we're gonna make the bodice of this sucker and like the bottom ruffle emerald green. So there's different ways to do that. So this is my doodle layer, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get rid of the dress form. And I feel like I should keep it, in case I wanna refer to it later. I'm gonna make a layer for us to play with green. So the different ways to do this are just actually come in I'm going to use the airbrush because that one's fun and start picking some greens, right? And you can really carefully fill it in or you can poorly fill it in and then come back. Uh, one way that I do stuff a lot is just put in more, more than I need. Just put in a little more than is actually going on. Then come in with either your, your lasso or your eraser and then get rid of, I have an easier time getting rid of what I don't want in a sketch than I do coloring inside the lines. I don't know what that says about my Aquarius up, hippie upbringing. I shouldn't say hippie upbringing. Somebody here might know my parents. They know they're hippie. They know they're hippie. So that's one way to do it. Or you can like really precisely color that in. But I like this approach, right? But then, you know, if we're, if we're like, uh, we want to like really discover something or do some fabric with some cool textures, um, another way we could do that, let's just get rid of that layer, is let's go to the internet and, and find girl standing. Okay, that's where, this is where we got girl standing, girl comma standing. Um, let's just type in emerald green because I think we're not going to get something horrible. You never know what well, you're going to find. There, who, we it's don't know gonna what's going to pop up. Emerald City yeah, this might be <laughs> slutty emerald city people. Um, uh, who cares? We use a current location. Then you can go into images 
And um, if I were on the um, computer or doing a big fabric print, I would go to my search tools mm -hmm. and I would select size large because yeah, I've got more resolution. Do you like the feathers? Yeah. Should we just <laughs> use that? Um, this got a response from our client. So I opened the image, so I opened my feather image, and now I'm gonna just say, save this image. And we're gonna work that into our bodice now. So I'm gonna go back to my photo, and I'm gonna say, file open, no, 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 file. You know what I should do right now? I should save this in case I do something stupid. We're gonna call this emerald Fabulous. So in case I do something silly, it's um, I can get back to it. So now we're going to insert as a layer that really cool um, feathery leaf thing. And it's huge, right? Um, so now let's start to shrink it and figure out like what part of it do we want in our jacket and here i can show you another cool thing let's leave the feathers there for just a second and let's go back to our earlier sketch so if i want to slide the feathers around in there and i want to mask stuff out i have to close these connections and then i can actually paint bucket some color in. so if i go back i like we call i call it like making a cookie cutter so we're going to make a cookie cutter out of this. So I'm just going to go in and anywhere where I don't have closure, I'm going to close stuff up so that I can paint bucket in that little bit of color. You'll see here in just a moment what I mean by that. Um, and since I've got white and white already, I'm actually first going to just paint bucket in like pink or something so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to take my paint bucket. Somewhere I have some openings, but not bad. So let's continue to look for openings. I'm betting, I'm betting this is an opening. And I'm betting that's an opening. I've got to be close. Let's do it again. Let's paint bucket in pink. Good. We're good. There's some in our hand to deal with later. But actually what I want to do is I want to paint bucket that white. And then now when I turn on my feathers, <coughs> turn on the feathers, I can see them just uh, not filling the whole page, but I can see them just inside of her body. And, and I think that bright chunk there with the dark on the sides looks kind of cool. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my feathers around until I've got something I like. This will be a painted costume. Printed. Uh, printed, printed and painted. So now if I wanna flip, if I wanna keep this, if I wanna keep this light bit on the middle of our costume, I can mirror my, my feathers. So I'm gonna take my magic box selector and I'm gonna move it until I'm kind of in the center of her bodice. And I'm gonna say edit, copy. So I've copied my feathers. And then when you have this highlighted box or a lasso, for some reason to turn it off, you have to touch the lasso again and just touch into open space. I don't know why. It's somewhere where this isn't as great and intuitive as Photoshop. Oh, but I reversed too far and I lost my I lost my feathers, so we gotta do it again. <laughs> I hiccuped, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In our shop, when people sneeze, what do you guys say? You go, Shh. If somebody sneezes, you get scolded. So let me copy that layer. And now let me make sure that it's actually there. Um, it could be, why wouldn't it be copying? See, there's always something to frustrate you. Um, We've got enough layers. I want to copy this layer. So now it should be copying.
the active layer has been pasted to the clipboard. Huh. I don't know why it's not copying. So figure out at your house why it's not copying and let me know. Let's try it one more time. Actually, let's see if it'll cut it. There we go. Instead of copying, we can use cut and then we're going to tell it to paste it. And then we are going to transform and move it back there. Actually, we don't want the right side of this. Is that the right side is the side we don't care about. So I've cut the right side off. I'm going to throw it in the garbage can and delete it. And then I am going to get rid of this random floaty stuff over here. I don't want that. I'm going to cut that out. Then the side that I like, I'm going to use the duplicate button. So that's the plus in the plus box. And then I'm going to say that I want to flip it. So I'm going to find out where flip is. And flip is actually in layers. So I'm going to flip it horizontal. And now we've mirrored the image. So now that I have my mirrored image, I can move it around. I can move my mirrored one until it's pretty much doing what the other side is. And then I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna merge that together. So I'm gonna merge down. So now all my green is living together again. And now let's go ahead and get rid of what we don't want to be green anymore. So I'm gonna go in. So earlier, you know, I was saying, I think of it as like removing stuff. I'm, I'm eliminating what isn't part of my costume. Because that's just the way that my brain handles this. It's like cut out a piece of fabric until you have something left. Even though we're building something. Let's see, her ruffs aren't going to be green, so we can get rid of that green. Her chest is going to be nude, so we can get rid of this. And this isn't going to be green. This is pretty fabulous. Uh, we just finished. Who wants this? You guys, we had a nutcracker that opened the day after Christmas. It was a real treat. Um, okay, so now we've got this green. Let's stick it in a few other places. Um, what color is going to go with my diamonds? Green and what else? Plum. Green and plum. So I'm going to just keep working on the green layer because we have our artsy uh, thing here, right? I wanted to show you guys like taking that, uh, taking an image and actually working an image in. So now, so now, I hope people in the class aren't just liking my stuff on Instagram. It'd be a way to get, to get you know, something free in the mail maybe. <laughs> what? Okay. So now I'm going to put my, my other little bits of green in and plum, yes. like like this kind of plum, like like an no, eggplant, like this, like that brighter. Is that good? Yeah. So now let's get the other diamonds in. Definitely whimsical. She needs some black. Diamonds too. This is like funeral harlequin. Funeral harlequin. Okay. So let's see. So I'm going to now actually move my masking layer my that I paint bucketed. I'm going to fuse that down to the green. Oh, is this someone maybe? Oh, we got we just got people liking us on Instagram. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I, I we'll have we'll screen. have to see who it is. Did you see your name on the screen? So I wasn't able to do this diamond over here because of my white, uh, my white layer. Um, let's see. How about black boots? Let's combat. put. But let's give her some combat <laughs> boots. But let's put in a few more things that we've already kind of figured out, and then we'll put in more details. Um, whoa, she's really tan. She's going to be, oh, that's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to airbrush in her face. Whoa, that's a lot. 
Um, I'm gonna airbrush. Okay, so check it out. Remember I said I wanna merge my white down, but my white had my original outline on it, so I've actually changed my mind. I'm gonna see how far do I have to reverse to get back to having my outline on the top. Let's do like two. It was Richard Cross. Richard, Richard gets the win. <laughs> he can pick out a couple free patterns. How does that sound? <laughs> there. There, now I'm back. Do you guys see what I did? Is I wanted to still be able to draw underneath my mask. I still wanted to be able to draw underneath this layer. So I'm gonna add a layer above my green. And that's where I'm gonna put my skin in. So now, um, so now when I put my skin in, um, actually if I put my skin in underneath the green, then when I run off the page, it's just gonna fill it in only in the air, look how wild I can go. It's only gonna fill it in where we want it to. Oh, she has white gloves, my bad. I think she's got- Black. With nude tights. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, like and let's pick a face. skirt color. What color for our skirt? More green, or what's a third color that would go good with that? Um, dark, like dark navy. Na oh, it needs to be light in your skirt. Kind of blue. How about how about navy, but not navy? Is that She's gross? Edgy. She's edgy. I think oh. that works. Really? That's idiot. Pick a new one. But pick a new light it shows color. Shows the point. <laughs> pick a light, a new light color. I don't know. How about like your mustardy yellow? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's very, like she's, she's <laughs> Irish. Okay, so there's that. We'll still give her black boots, I promise. So while I'm messing on this layer, why don't I just go ahead and put in a little bit of highlight and shadow here and there, because that's going to richen it up. And um, if I even take and make it narrower, I can put just a few little concentrated folds in here. Do a few that are even darker, where stuff where there's really shadows in her costume. And then, then go ahead and put some that are much lighter here and there because she's on stage and the stage lights shining. Okay, let's get some black leather boots. So since I'm gonna bounce back and forth to the internet, I'm gonna save this just because. And then let's go find some black. Oh, I better not type black leather. Black leather fabric. Well, leather isn't fabric, but we don't want anything racy to show up on Google. Because um, it will at the wrong time. Um, how about some of this like Harlequin-y textured leather stuff? This looks good. So I'm going to save that. And if it doesn't let you save, you can always just screenshot stuff by holding power and home simultaneously for a second at the same time. So now let's make her her boots here. So I'm gonna take my boot fabric from the camera roll and I am gonna shrink it until, until it looks like it's about the right size-ish. And then I'm gonna just edit away some of it so to make it look a little bit more like a boot. She's going to Mardi Gras. She's going, she is. <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna be Fat Tuesday soon. I need to get us a king cake. Um, I'm gonna just use a little bit of white right now and fix this little bit between her boots. And she probably needs little laces, so let's give her some. So now I have, since I have, I want to work outside the masking, now I have to work on the layer above my masking. Kirsten I don't know why her lace, up. Kirsten goes to my hair. Her laces were on the sides, it made no sense. And I'm going to even put a little bit of highlight and shadow right into her laces. And then let's give her some buttons on her boots because, you know,
be free and have fun unless it's getting judged at the state fair. Yeah. And it's as serious as it can be. Okay, she's getting there. Okay, I think uh, probably this burgundy -y color for her hat. And instead of like trying to make velvet, let's just do this, this step one more time. And let's find burgundy. I don't spell, as you all already know. Oh. Burgundy, burgundy, <laughs> burgundy velvet. Um, let, ooh, okay. Let's, this is good. This is going to be her hat. Oh, this is better. Um, come on. It doesn't want to up the resolution, but that's all right. It's just a drawing. Now it's probably going to come out on the top, so we're going to have to slide it underneath her hat. So we're going to move this layer below our mask. And then we're going to edit, transform, move. And we're going to stick that up there in her hat. And then we're going to just use the eraser and get rid of what doesn't belong. She's going to wish she had ears in here, probably, but that's later. Oh. Um, now, let's do her ruffs here. So another cool thing, if you have the Apple Pencil, which I keep showing it to the computer like you guys can see, I'm using the Apple Pencil, um, is if you float in a section, it should um, select the color. There we go. So see, I'm holding my finger down. And it will select the color, but since my layer doesn't have anything but burgundy, if I want to select this yellow, I need to go to that layer where my yellow is. And then if I hold my, my finger in place, it'll select that yellow. So if I want to use that same yellow in her, in her ruffs, I can use that same yellow. Probably in her ruffs and then her bow. So we're going to have to go on top of the green to get her bow. In fact, why don't we just go way up? Nope. I want it to be below my... Nope, nope, nope. So the reverse is just the greatest thing ever. You can just keep reversing until you've got what you want. Same deal. Let's put a little highlight and shadow in that because that's going to always be a good thing. And all these ideas that we're showing you, you can, you know, you can really get detailed and involved with all of it. And you'll see like I, I constantly am zooming in and out because it works much easier for me. But I, you know, I can't always see what I'm doing. I want to go back to her hat. We're nearly there, folks. So now, now is a good time to just think of some questions as you watch me just do my last little bit of details on here. Um, and play with it, play with it, play with it, play with it. It's just the absolute best advice that you can get is to expect to be frustrated with it and expect to be wow, you know? She needs a little, not quite that dark, she needs just a little shading right in there. And she needs just a little bit of makeup or something. Um, let's make her gloves this color. Except I have to go to that layer. So then too, like if there's layers, you're like, I'm, this layer's good, I'm happy with it. You can just um, start sandwiching them down or merging them down and fusing them together. Are there any questions coming in? I'm going to just keep doing stuff to her until she's done. But she's getting there. Let's now, um, let's give her a tiny little bit of hair. And then let's give her some texture on her skirt. Let's do skirt texture first. So I'm going to pick the layer where her skirt is. And I'm going to add a new layer above it. And I'm going to find a color first that's in her skirt. 
So I'm going to take this darker color that's in her skirt. And then I've got now I'm a layer above it. And I'm going to do this spatter one. And I am going to hunt through here until I find the one that looks like netting. And I use it so much I know it's in a sword. So now I'm going to take my little bit of netting. And I'm going to just give her a few spots with a little bit of netting going on to kind of make it feel, I don't know what that white chunk is there, to try to make it feel a little bit more skirty. And you can even do some that are darker, a few spots, just like we did highlight and shadow, and then do a few spots that are really light or nearly white. And that'll richen that up a little bit. Um, she needs a little more shadow and highlight on her legs. So we're going to do that. So now I'm just going to kind of keep going on to the top layer and just putting the last little bits of details here and there. Let's give her some brown hair. Let's give her red hair. All right. Because um, she's wild and it goes good with her Mardi Gras costume. Oh, my pencil is dying. I bet she could use some sparkles really quick here. And she needs something going on with her buttons. Her buttons are kind of boring. So then, now you can start to go on top of that initial sketch and actually improve stuff. And then you can go back and start deleting parts of that initial sketch. You know, start getting rid of the parts that you don't really care for in your initial sketch. She's going to get some piping. She's going to get some more piping because we just absolutely love piping at our shop. If it's not piped, it's not finished, basically. She's going to get a two-piece sleeve with piping. Let's put a little dimension into these. Um, any, or did any questions come in? Let's put a little bit of highlight and shadow on these. So hopefully this inspired you guys and helped with some of your frustrations to kind of see some different ways to approach this. So that you don't have to like invent the wheel every time. You can just start with something that's already there. So I'm just picking different things that I want to add shadow to. Oh, that's black. And I'm going to show you our, like two last finishes, and then we will be done. Um, so another a thing I like to do, too, is on the top-ish, I like to give her just something to be standing on, right? So she's not just standing out here in the blue. And then I like to make another layer and put some stage lights on her because I think that always helps something look a little more theatrical. So if we just go put a little bit of yellow and maybe a little bit of kind of magenta stage light on her. And then I'm going to dim it down a little bit. And then I'm going to just take an eraser and make a big eraser and get rid of the stage light on her because she's more important than the stage light that's shining on her. My eraser was too big. Okay, now is the time for questions. Do you have specific yeah. base profiles that you download from somewhere or just Google? No, I mean, as long as, you know, right, we're not supposed to use stuff from Google Image unless <laughs> you have permission. Um, as long as you're not leaving the original thing there at all, it's okay to do that in the privacy of your own home. Another thing we do is we have a subscription to Shutterstock where we can get stuff. Um, but you, we just use Google Images yeah, all, constantly. And it's just the way that I figure out all sorts of stuff. That wasn't a good signature. Look, I love that you can just reverse. Did I answer Jesus, their question? 
Travis <laughs> Halsey. One, eight. It's too big. Yeah, now the 18th. Really <laughs> really so, I mean, you can just go nuts. Let me show you one last thing that I like to do. I like to find a frame sometimes. Gold, why not? Let's just, let's just put it in a gold frame. You know, if you can wow people with all the things around your design, it's just going to all come out just great. You know, just distract from the design. Let's save this image. Look, this is a vector gold frame. Did you see that the middle is already gone? I probably don't even have to. No, it's just, oh, it didn't save it. Save image. Is it there now? There, it's done. Well, thank you, everybody. I think that's we're we're like one minute away from the end. So, any other questions? We're hopefully, um, did it record? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it says it somewhere you. else on my screen. Um, yeah, hopefully that gives you some confidence and ideas. I mean, we do a lot too for, for competition costumes or if the girl is here, we just take a picture of the girl in a pose or two and draw stuff right on top of her. That's it. I think we should make this costume. It looks like fun. Gold. Gold. That's what it looks like with your highlighting. Like what? With all your highlighting Gold. shadows. It's metallic. Metallic. Hi, Bethel. Come here, puppy. 